So I hear you're a school teacher. Well, formerly a school teacher, just to make ends meet. <laughs> People in Dallas highly recommended you. It's a fairly easy job, and um, you know the rest of the thing. And uh, <laughs> what I don't like about this job. Um, well, there's you know something about the hotel. It's been you know known to give people second thoughts ah, about the job. I'm intrigued. <laughs> well. <laughs> Caretaker in 1970, and he went crazy. He took an axe and he chopped up his family. We said it was what he called cabin fever, and he stacked them neatly in one of the rooms. One, two, three, and then he blew his brains out. <laughs> well, I assure you, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> Right now, could I see Tony? <laughs> no. Why not? I don't 
going to talk about Tony anymore. <coughs> all right, that's fine. You just rest in bed all day. We're just going to go in the other room to talk, Doc, and then I'll come back and check on you later, okay? <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing physically wrong with Dan. Yeah, well, he seems all right now, but you should have seen him. Well, you know, children can scare you to death. These episodes are not all uncommon. Well, I guess you're right. Have you lived in Boulder long, Mrs. Torrance? <laughs> Only about three months. Mm -hmm. We're from Vermont. <laughs> and we <laughs> Well, I guess Dan started talking to Tony about when we put him in elementary school. Then he had an injury and had to keep him out. What kind of injury? Just who came to the shoulder. How on earth did you manage that? Well, it's just one of those things purely next to mm -hmm. my husband had been drinking. And, right. And Dad had scattered his papers all over the place. And when he went to go grab his arm to pull him away, just one of those things you do a hundred times with a child in a park, on the streets. But on this particular occasion, what? He just used too much strength and injured Danny's arm. <laughs> But something good has come from it all. He told me, Wendy, I'm not going to have another drink. And if I do, you can leave me. And he hasn't had any alcohol in five months. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
French fries and ketchup. Mr. Helen, how'd you know we call him Doc? Well, I guess I must have heard you call him that earlier. Anyway, it kind of looks like a Doc. What's up, Doc? <laughs> now here we got all your dry goods. You got post toasties, pop tarts, rice krispies, and cocoa pops. I can watch the boys clean, Doc. Dry fruits. <laughs> other folks. Mostly they don't know it or they don't believe it. How long have you been able to do it? Why don't you want to talk about it? I'm not as supposed to. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're not supposed to. Tony. Who's Tony? The little boy that lives in my mouth. <laughs> Is Tony the one who tells you things? <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Your mom and dad know he tells you things? No, Tony told me never to tell them. Has Tony ever told you anything about this particular place? About the Overlook Hotel? Maybe he showed me something. Try to think of what it was. <laughs> Mr. Halloran, are you scared of this place? No, I ain't scared of nothing here. It's just that some places are like people. Some shine, some don't. I guess you could say the Overlook Hotel here has something about it, like shining. Let me tell you about it.
stay out. <laughs>
busy at all, sir. Uh, seems I'm a, I'm a little short tonight. Lloyd, uh, how's my credit in this joint? <laughs> Your credit's fine, Mr. Torrance. Ah, oh, that's swell, Lloyd. I always liked you. Best goddamn bartender from Timbuktu to Portland, Maine. Portland, Oregon, for that matter. <laughs> Thank you for saying so, Mr. Torrance. So, Lloyd, <laughs> here's to five miserable months on the wagon and all the irreparable harm it's done me. <laughs> How are things going, Mr. Torrance? Uh, things could be better, Lloyd. Things could be better. <laughs> Nothing serious. Just a little problem with the old sperm bank upstairs. <laughs> Women, you can't live with them. You can't live without them. Uh, words of wisdom, Lloyd. Words of wisdom. Uh, but you know, that bitch, she'll never let me forget what happened. I didn't touch him, I didn't. Well, I heard him once, but that was three goddamn years ago. Little fuckery. Throwing my papers all over the floor and all I did was just pull them up. Momentary loss of muscular coordination. <laughs> Spirit and crack.
trouble? There's a family up there all by themselves. A young kid. With a snowstorm and all. Snowstorm and all. Sure would appreciate it if you could call on your radio. See if you're okay. Yes, I'll wait. Thank you. They don't answer? Thanks for trying. Yes, when's the next flight to Colorado? Uh, I am so, so, 
So, sorry. Uh, let me get you down the stage, sir, where we can put uh, <laughs> water on this. So, uh, what do they call you around here, Jeepsy? <laughs> uh, Grady, sir. Delbert Grady. They get some of this step off me, too. <laughs> Grady! Delbert Grady? Mr. Grady, weren't you once caretaker here? Yeah, I saw your picture in the paper. You chopped your wife and daughter in the little bit. If you may forgive me, sir, but you are the caretaker. You have always been the caretaker. And I said no, for I have always been here, sir. Your son has a very expensive talent. Sir, and he's attempting to use that talent against you at this very moment. Well, it's my wife. She interferes on the rock. Well, perhaps I need a good talking to. <coughs> perhaps a bit more than that. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Tarzan. 
Lawrence. <laughs> Who's there? Delbert Grady, sir. I see you could hardly have taken care of the business that we discussed earlier, Mr. Torrance. I assure you, Mr. Grady, I was just about to take care of that. Now, why don't you just open this door? <laughs>